Welcome to the fifth lecture of week 3 of course unit operations of particulate matter. In this lecture we will discuss gas fluidization. If you uh, remember in the last lecture we have started gas fluidization and we are continuing that in fifth lecture also. So, here first of all we will discuss what is entrainment and how entrainment is uh, considered in fluidization process and then we will discuss design of fluidizer with an example and finally we will discuss application of fluidized bed in industry. So, let us start with entrainment. Now, what happens that a free board or free space is provided between the top of the fluidized bed and top fluid outlet in order to minimize entrainment of the fines in the outgoing fluids. Now, first of all we should understand what is entrainment. I guess many of us understand this. Entrainment is basically carrying the solid particle with the fluid and that is also possible in fluidized bed. So, when we are defining the fluidized bed in fluidizer after bed there are free space which is available from top of the bed and top of the column through which uh, a gas exits. So, this space is basically called as free space or free board and when this is not sufficient the entrainment of solid with the gas is possible. So, most fluidized bed are composed of certain amounts of fines and additional fines could also form due to mutual attrition between particles. So, when we are dealing with fine particles, fine particle can easily be entrained with the gas. Now, when fine particle is um, fluidized in the fluidized bed, what happens when, a, when the fine particle strike with the wall of the uh, fluidizer or when they uh, strike to each other, when they strike to each other further uh, smaller fines can be made and these smaller fines can easily be entrained with the gas. So, particles ascending the free board space gradually lose their kinetic energy and some of them return to the bed because uh, particle carry uh, some energy and when uh, they move with the gas they lose the energy and then it falls back and it happens usually when particles are coarse or denser. The particle concentrations in the free board gas thus decreases until it reaches a constant value at which the terminal settling velocity of the accompanying particle is close to or less than the velocity of outgoing fluid. So, uh, when the it will reach to the terminal settling velocity or less than the velocity of outgoing stream till then the concentration of free board uh, zone will be constant. So, what happens? The free board height corresponding to this constant entrainment rate is called the transport disengagement height and this determines the optimum distance for fluid exit ports above the fluidized bed. So, when we are dealing with the design of fluidizer, uh, bed height is important factor, but along with this the height of the height of column above bed it is also important because uh, we have to stop entrainment of the particles. So, as far as height is concerned we have to calculate transport disengagement height and then that height would be added to the bed height and uh, other factors also to, to calculate total height of the fluidized. Now, as far as entrainment is concerned, how we can relate this mathematically? It can be done by one of the dimensional less correlation that illustrates the relationship between fractional entrainment and transport disengagement height that we have denoted with Z e and it is related as e is equal to 0 0.154 and here we have whole expression. So, you see here we have uh, u c is the uh, velocity of uh, gas that is operating velocity, Z d is the transport disengagement height, d is the column diameter, 
mu is the viscosity of fluid and mu naught is the viscosity of fluid that is gas at 25 degree Celsius and other parameters are there where u m f you understand this is nothing but the minimum fluidizing velocity. So, E is basically fractional entrainment that is kg of solid per kg of gas. So, considering all these parameter we can calculate how much fractional entrainment is uh, occurring or if we know the fractional entrainment uh, that uh, let us say 0 0.001, 0 0.005 like that if we define fractional entrainment accordingly uh, we can calculate how much uh, TDH is provided, how much transport disengagement height is provided. Now, if you see this figure what happens here we have different section when we start from the distributor plate this is the height of the bed after this splash zone is there where particle moves up and then they fall down and after this we have transport disengagement height and then dilute transport. So, all these height all these sections are falling in free board section of the column. So, here we are discussing different zones of the fluidized bed. Now, as far as gas fluidization is concerned, here we will discuss one example to illustrate the design of fluidizer and this example goes as, it is desired to fluidize 3 tons of catalyst particles that are in the form of cylindrical pellets. So, here the uh, shape of the particle is cylindrical not the spherical. So, pellets is having 175 microns diameter and what is the height? Height is uh, just half of the uh, diameter and it is fluidized with the gas which is uh, having volumetric flow as 600 meter cube per hour. Density of gas is 2.292 kg per meter cube and uh, viscosity is 0 0.11 centipoise. Now, catalyst density is 1370 kg per meter cube. We have to design a fluidizer if an operating gas velocity is 3 times than that of minimum gas velocity. So, for this condition we have to design the fluidizer. So, let us start the solution of this problem. What we have to calculate is uh, here we have to design the fluidizer uh, column or fluidize bed and as far as design is concerned we have to calculate diameter as well as height. Now, how diameter will be affected? Diameter will be affected by velocity of gas and total volumetric flow of gas uh, we know. So, when we calculate the velocity of gas, uh, we can calculate cross sectional area and then we can calculate the diameter. And you see for this problem, it is recommended that the operational gas velocity is 3 times more than the minimum fluidizing velocity. So, first of all, we have to calculate minimum fluidizing velocity. So, let us start this. As you know that particle is not spherical, we have to consider the shape of the particle. So, volume of each catalyst particle is Vp that should be pi by 4 d square L, where L is d by 2 because it, it is half of the diameter. So, considering this we can calculate uh, particle volume as pi d cube by 8. Now, here as shape is not regular or it is not spherical, we have to calculate volumetric diameter of particle and that we can find by uh, equating the volume of a sphere with that of the particle. So, volume of a sphere should be pi by 6 dv cube. So, when this vp is equated to the particle volume, we can calculate dv value and it comes as 159 micrometer. Now, we have to calculate surface area of each particle and that should be pi dl because it is a cylindrical pellet. So, pi dl plus 2 pi d square by 4 that is uh, in a cylindrical pellet. So, above surface we have to consider as the surface area of circle and that should be 2. So, here we have pi d square as total surface area of particle. So, here we will calculate the sphericity of uh, catalyst particle which can be defined as 
the surface area of a sphere having equal volume than that of the particle divided by surface area of particle. So, sphericity here we can calculate as pi dv square that is the surface area of a sphere which is having equal volume than that of the particle divided by surface area of particle. Uh, so, here we can uh, divide this two. So, sphericity comes as 0.8255. Now, as we have to calculate minimum fluidization velocity, we have to calculate Reynolds number at minimum fluidizing condition and Galileo number because we have the relationship of Reynolds number at minimum fluidizing condition and Galileo number. So, here you, you see this uh, number we have that is Archimedes number and uh, this Archimedes number and Galileo number, these both number are equal. Therefore, we can use Archimedes number also and Galileo number also. Expression of both number would be same. So, Archimedes number here we will use where instead of diameter, we will use volumetric diameter of particle. Considering all parameters over here, we can have Archimedes number as 1021.567. And this expression we have used for uh, Reynolds number and uh, how we can obtain this, this we have obtained if you remember second lecture of this week where we have discussed uh, minimum fluidizing velocity of different shapes. There we have derived this expression. So, in this expression while putting uh, the value of Archimedes number, we can calculate Reynolds number at minimum fluidizing condition which comes as 0.61336. Considering this Reynolds number, we can calculate minimum fluidization velocity and uh, it comes as 0 0.0185 meter per second. And here we know that operating velocity in fluidizer is 3 times more than the minimum fluidizing velocity. So, we can calculate. Uh, operating velocity of the gas and it comes as 3 into 0 0.0185, so 0 0.0554 or 199.9 meter per hour. Volumetric flow of gas that we know 600 meter cube per hour and here we can calculate cross sectional area of the column which is nothing but volumetric flow of gas divided by operating fluid velocity and it comes as 3.0007 meter square and when we calculate diameter it comes as 1.955 meter. So, this is a required column diameter for fluidizer. Now, fluid velocity we have considered as 0 0.05554 and this velocity should never be exceed the terminal settling velocity of the particle because then only entrainment is possible. So, we must ensure that the chosen operating velocity should not exceed terminal settling velocity of the particle that is V t. So, we have to calculate V t by trial and error. First of all, let us assume the value of V t as 0.37 meter per second and Reynolds number we can calculate considering this velocity it comes as 12.3. Now, if you see this uh, curve here the curve is drawn between drag coefficient and the single particle Reynolds number and the particle Reynolds number over here is 12.3 and uh, here we have different uh, sphericity curve the sphericity in present case is 0.82 so it will lie somewhere here and it is 12 so we can see value uh, from here so value of drag coefficient should be around 9. So, corresponding to Reynolds number 12.3, we can calculate FD value as uh, 9. We can see FD value as 9 from this curve and uh, when we go for uh, terminal settling velocity expression in terms of FD, this is the expression and we put all parameters over here and terminal settling velocity should be 0.371 meter per second and actual gas velocity is 0 0.0555. So, that is very less in comparison to this. So, uh, the design, so the condition is satisfied. We can now check the type of fluidization prevailing. So, check the type of fluidization we need to calculate fraud number and in fraud number we need diameter of particle and as diameter here is uh, uh, 
and as particle here is not spherical we have to calculate volume surface diameter and that should be sphericity into uh, volumetric diameter. If you remember second lecture there we have defined the diameter of particle of irregular shape as sphericity into diameter of particle we are considering. So, here we have uh, to recalculate the diameter and it comes as 131 micron. Once we calculate the froud number uh, considering minimum fluidizing velocity it comes as 0.266. Six, so which is less than one, so particulate fluidization is prevailing in this case. Now, using Richardson and Zaki's correlation, we have to compute the voidage of the expanded bed. So, to calculate the voidage, we need n index, and that index is related to Reynolds number by this expression, where this Reynolds number t is the Reynolds number at terminal settling velocity. So, that we can calculate because we know terminal settling velocity. So, it comes as 150730.6. Now, to calculate n index, we need a naught, b naught and m which we can see from this table. So, if you see this uh, Reynolds number value, so if you see Reynolds number value, it is falling in this uh, section where it is greater than 500. So, A naught should be 2.4, B naught 0 and M 0. Considering all these value over here, N we can obtain as 2.4. So, once we know the N factor, we can calculate porosity by this where U O F is the actual uh, operating velocity of the bed, actual operating velocity of the gas that we have already calculated and this ui, ui we can calculate by this expression uh, that we have also discussed. So, here using this expression we can calculate ui as 0.3699 meter per second. Considering this value voidage of the bed is found as 0.454. Now, we have to calculate height of the bed. Height of the bed, how we can calculate? Since the mass of the solids handled is 3 tons or 3000 kg. So, so, here we have defined a parameter L naught and that is equal to volume of solids divided by cross sectional area of the column. So, here uh, basically L naught is the height of the column when voidage is 0. So, volume of the solid and cross sectional area of the column that we know volume of the solid is uh, this uh, uh, 3000 kg divided by its density. So, that should be the volume of solid cross sectional area we know. So, that L naught value comes as 0 0.7298. Further, while balancing the solid we can get this expression LMF 1 minus 0 0.454 because we can get this expression LMF 1 minus 0 0.454 equal to L naught that is 0.7298. Now, if we consider this particular expression here, LMF is the total height of the bed when this much porosity is or this much, much voidage is applicable. So, total solid is available in height of LMF and that solid is equal to 0.7298. So, while balancing the solid, we can calculate height of bed as 1.336 meter. Further, we have to calculate pressure drop in the column. So, pressure drop in the column, if you remember that we have derived in uh, first lecture of this week. So, this expression, I guess you remember. So, while putting values in this expression, we can calculate pressure drop, which comes out as 0.979 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, how we have to calculate the height? We need to calculate free board height because uh, height of the bed we already know. Uh, so, free board height or transportation disengagement height we need to calculate and for this purpose we have assumed the entrainment should be very less and that should be 0 0.001 and uh, while putting values in this expression, this expression is uh, used to calculate uh, the height of uh, transport disengagement section. So, while putting entrainment as 0 0.001 and other factors, we can calculate Z D as 0.351. So, height of the column we can calculate 
uh, above distributor as 1.336 that is bed height plus height of transport disengagement zone. So, it comes out as 1.687 meter. So, results are summarized here column diameter 1.955, column height 1.687, pressure drop is this much and gas flow rate, gas volumetric flow rate 600 meter cube per hour. So, you can observe from here that uh, column diameter is higher than this because uh, to calculate height we need other factors, uh, uh, we need height of other zones and uh, uh, combining of these we can calculate total height of the column and here another factor is this like uh, when we increase the gas velocity so and in that case uh, more height is possible so all these factor we have to consider to calculate height of the column so uh, in this way we can uh, uh, design the fluidizer uh, as far as design is concerned, we have to design, we have to calculate diameter, height and pressure drop. Now, lastly, we should discuss the application of fluidized bed in industry. Here, we have two types of uh, application. First is physical and second is chemical. So, for physical processes which use fluidized bed include drying, mixing, granulization, coating, heating and cooling. All these processes take advantage of the excellent mixing capabilities of fluidized bed as we have discussed that it has uh, it mix the um, particles of different uh, uh, densities as well as size. Good solid mixing gives rise to good heat transfer, temperature uniformity and ease of process control. One of the most important application of fluidized bed is to dry the solids as we have seen that it is used to uh, uh, dry the rice, wheat etc. in spouted bed. Fluidized beds are currently used commercially for drying such material as crushed minerals, sand, polymers, pharmaceuticals, fertilizers and crystalline products. Now popularity of fluidized bed as dryer is due to dryers are compact, simple in construction and of relatively low capital cost. The absence of moving parts other than the feeding and discharge devices leads to reliable operation and low maintenance. The thermal efficiency of these dryer is relatively high and fluidized bed dryers and fluidized bed dryers are gentle in handling of powders. So, these are some factors based on that it is highly useful as a dryer. Now, we will discuss one uh, example for physical process and here we are using fluidized bed as solid cooler. Now, if you see this image what happens solid enters hot solid enters uh, through this uh, and uh, it is uh, fluidized when uh, air is entering from the bottom. So, hot solid enters fr uh, from here from this section and it is fluidized and complete bed is having coils in which cooling water flows. So, as the solid particles are in fluidized state the heat transfer will be enhanced and uh, uh, due to this the solid can be cool down. So, this is the fluidized bed solid cooler. So, fluidized beds are often used to cool particulate solids following a reaction. Cooling may be by fluidized air alone or by the use of cooling water passing through tubes immersed in bed as we have just discussed. Now, as far as chemical process application is concerned, the advantages of fluidized bed for chemical reactions are the gas solid contacting is generally good because uh, uh, gas and solid both are in moving condition. The excellent solid circulation with the bed promotes good heat transfer between bed particles and the fluidizing gas. This gives rise to near isothermal condition even when reactions are strongly exothermic or endothermic because here continuous movement is there. So, uh, the uniformity of temperature is maintained inside the bed. 
good heat transfer also gives rise to ease of control of the reaction and the fluidity of the bed makes for ease of removal of solids from reactor so when we are considering solid in the reactor uh, the um, uh, as it is in moving condition that uh, can exit the reactor very easily so that is also an advantage as far as chemical process is concerned the very famous uh, example very common example is fluid catalytic cracking unit it is a celebrated example of fluidized bed technology for breaking down large molecules in crude oil to small molecules suitable for gasoline etc so here you see in petroleum industry uh, or uh, in petroleum plant uh, to break the crude into smaller chains of hydrocarbon we use fcc unit that is fluid catalytic unit and that is very common example further here we have summary of uh, gas solid chemical reactions which involve or which employ fluidization so homogeneous gas phase reaction its example is ethylene hydrogenation uh, and reason is rapid heating of entering gas uniform controllable temperature second reaction type is heterogeneous non catalytic reaction example sulfide ore roasting and combustion uh, reason ease of solids handling temperature uniformity good heat transfer and similarly we have heterogeneous catalytic reaction uh, where uh, examples are hydrocarbon cracking uh, thallic and hydride and uh, reasons are again ease of solid handling temperature uniformity good heat transfer so here some we are summarizing the application fluidized bed reactor energy production uh, it is used in energy production through gasification coal burning and chemical looping reactors also used as catalytic cracking as we have discussed in the last slide drying and cooling of powder in this uh, fluidized bed are used for polymers food pharmaceuticals product biochemical products for pneumatic transport of powder fluidized bed are used for dense as well as dilute condition and here we have to summarize the lecture this summary is for lecture number 4 as well as 5 and here gas solid fluidization system is described different types of powders and its behavior in gas fluidization is discussed design of fluidizer is illustrated through an example and industrial application of fluidized bed are discussed and here we have the references and that's all for now thank you